to take matters into your own hand. You have to get the same weaponry. You have to do the same thing that those who are trying to harm you. You have to be willing to sacrifice. And you did say that if 10 million die, 10 million will live. So who are willing to be the 10 million that die? So that the other 10 million can live. Let us get real about it. I could care less about this God protecting me. If you're ready to die, then die so the 10 million can live. The problem with that is our people don't give a damn about your death. They'll just say, oh, that Negro Farrakhan dead. That dude Talik dead. And they'll continue to be slaves. They'll continue complaining and being oppressed. That's all. See, that's reality. I want to make two more quick points. And we're going to call it a, a day. And again, I'm not saying anything to be malicious, or vindictive, or out of jealousy. Or I want to give us something to think about. Be careful what you believe. Be careful to believe that you are more than what you are. That goes for anybody. And that's easy to do when we get into these Religions because we are divine. God is with me. God is with you, but you can't say that God will protect you. You have to say, unless, unless, if God is with you, who can be against you? You got the greatest power ever. And you scared to say, try to kill me. I dare you. God got my back. You can't say that because you're not sure about it. I really wanted to make this video because during this speech at Mask, uh, Mosque Mariam in Chicago, Illinois, October the 21st, 2012, that Brother Farrakhan made, I heard him say and tell the people this is our country. Please direct me and tell me anywhere in the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's teachings where Elijah Muhammad says that this nation is our country. We are part of this. So see, that again, that goes to show you this is not Elijah Muhammad's teaching. Point blank. That's just the bottom line, y'all. I ain't trying to... I'm not, I'm not going to continue to repeat myself. I'm not trying to hurt somebody's feelings or be an addicted junk. You can feel however you feel. You can't handle the real truth. There's nowhere in the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's teaching that Elijah Muhammad said, this is our country. It is true that we should have some part of this country. The so-called Negro, the descendants of slaves and their ancestors, our ancestors. We sweat, we bled in order and we have contributed to this nation. There's no doubt about that. But as I and Brother Andre was speaking not too long ago. We use this as an example. I told Andre, what if we bought a computer together? The computer is, we're going to buy a cheap computer. The computer is $50, <laughs> okay? Brother Andre lives 300 miles from me. This is our computer. I pay $25 so we can have the computer. The computer itself is 300 miles away from me. It is our computer. 
But I can't touch the computer. I can't go on Facebook on the computer. I can't see the computer. The only one who can control the computer, it is ours. My money is invested in the computer, but who controls the computer? So really, who is who? Who really owns the computer? I can say it's ours, but really it's Andre. It's with Andre. He's the one on Facebook. He's the one on YouTube. He's the one that controls the computer. I don't. So yes, it's our computer because I have an investment in the computer, but Andre has the computer. So yes, you are we supposed to be American citizens. We bled for this country, died for this country. We were exploited for this nation. We made various contributions so to make this nation as strong and great as it is. But it is their nation. We don't make no laws. We don't control nothing. Everything is, is out of our hands. It is our country only in name. And having a country only in name means nothing. It means nothing. So to bring this message to its conclusion, I would like to say this. The speech that Brother Farrakhan gave in Chicago, Mas Mariam, October 21st, I believe, it was part two of his lecture in relation to the 17th anniversary of the Million Man March. And I am happy to say that I was there. At first, I was not going to go, but I decided that it was my responsibility. It was something that I had to do. And even if it was just myself and Brother Farrakhan, just myself and him alone, then that's the way it was going to be. And I'm so happy that I can say I was a part of history. What a wonderful and beautiful day. But now, after thinking about things, see, in religion, we believe, religion, we really don't think. Elijah Muhammad, under the honorable Elijah Muhammad's teaching, Elijah Muhammad taught the FOI, the fruit of Islam. He taught his followers that we are supposed to be thinking machines. The FOI, the MGT, you are not supposed to be somebody's robot. So does that mean, Elijah, if you are teaching me to think, if you are teaching me to question things, does this mean that I'm not supposed to question you, Messenger Muhammad? Does this mean I'm not supposed to question you, Minister Louis Farrakhan? I'm a thinking machine. I'm not a robot. So why are you going to get angry when I am doing what you tell me to do which is to think for myself and not be a robot. To question things. We should be like a detective. We should be like a CSI. We, that's how our, our mentality should be. While you're listening to, listening to me, that's the way you are supposed to be. Always investigating, examining, breaking down what people say. I love it. I want you to do that. Because I want to see my error. I want to be able to see where I'm going wrong. And if you're correct, then I will change my ways. Because I want to be on the right path. Ain't that what you say in Islam? Oh Allah, guide me on the right path. Not the wrong path. Guide me on the right path. That's what I'm looking for. That's why I'm talking to us today. So that we can get on the right path. So that all of us can get on the same ship. So that we can work together towards a common goal and common purpose. the 17th anniversary of the Million Man March. 
It is also called the Holy Day of Atonement. And in and during the 1995 Million Man March, black men were was asked to atone for their sins against their women, their families, their children, their neighborhoods and communities, atone for the wrongs that they committed. And that in and of itself, that's beautiful. The, the intent is good. But the question arises. I want y'all to listen now. See, the question arises is that the black man, the black males who are descendants of slaves born in America, the question arises is we are supposed to do all this atonement when we ourselves are victims. We are victims. So who are going to atone for the sins that have been made against the black man in America? Now, if we were in our right state of mind, I could understand of why we should come together and atone for our sins. But our mentality and our heads and our minds, we've been conditioned and trained by a vicious oppressor. We've been trained and guided in a filthy, violent, unrighteous, nasty society that forced itself on us before we were even born. So who is to atone for the sins against the black man in America? So what you are doing in essence is that you're taking the pressure off the real perpetrators of this crime and putting it on the victim. The black man is filled with sin. We must atone, atone because we are victims. And that's wrong to try to make the victim look like the perpetrator. When, when the black man's mind He's not in his right state of mind. He's not in his right state of consciousness. His hands, his mind is guided and he's taught and influenced by another person. And we all know who these people are. We were raised in a racist society. The real perpetrator is this racist Caucasian society that we were born in that taught us all these different things that and these religious teachings that teach men that they are superior over women who taught us these things i will atone when i know better but when i was born into this i don't know any better the things i'm doing is in ignorance yes i will atone but i was doing things out of ignorance i didn't know any better so when we, we are asked these million black men to atone for their sins, they were not in their right state of mind. And when you're not in your right state of mind, it is called insanity. And you can be proven guilty by reason of insanity. So you don't go to prison, you go to an insane asylum. And the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is like an insane asylum to help those who have been made insane. Those who have gone mentally ill. You don't blame. Somebody when they are not in their right state of mind. You don't blame somebody who's mentally retarded for their action. Because they don't know any better. We as black men in this country. We was born into this. We don't know any better. But once we come into a betterment. And we continue to do certain things. Then we doing it with knowledge. And that's different. And if you're doing it with knowledge. Then you should really be shaming yourself. And it should never have gotten to this point. Where you have to stand a million man strong. And tell women and children in your family and neighborhood. How sorry you are. If you was in your right state of mind. What the hell. 
Apparently you wasn't to go that far. There's nowhere in the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad where Elijah Muhammad say, this is our country. Why would Elijah Muhammad tell you that this is our country when he teaches that America is doomed? He teaches that this place is supposed to be burned, destroyed by fire. Nothing will grow here for a thousand years. Not even a blade of grass. But when you tell people this is your country, then you are telling the followers of Elijah Muhammad that there is hope that you can live here among devils in peace. Instead of gathering your resources, gathering your people, understanding that you have to exodus, that you have to leave. The ship is sinking. Why would you want to try to give people false hope on a ship that your teacher, Elijah Muhammad, told you is sinking? In fact, the ship is going to be burned to death. This is not our country. This is their country. Regardless to what contributions we have given to this nation, it belongs to them. We control nothing. They don't view us as, they view us as nothing. So let them have it. Because your God, Elijah Muhammad said, this nation, America, is falling. God has determined that it must be destroyed. So why would you want to keep God, Allah's children here, to be part of the destruction instead of doing everything you can to get us out of here, to get us out of the drama? Because these are teaching of Louis Farrakhan and Louis Farrakhan has the mindset of Lot's wife there's something here that he likes there's something here that he wants instead of packing your bags and getting out of Dodge and that's the problem with so many of your so called pro black leaders and pro conscious they are their mindset is a future here. How is there a future in a place that is fallen, that is on its way on a path of destruction? So if you are here, then you will be destroyed too. If the ship sink, you sink with it. That is not what God wants. That is not what the creation wants. You did not come through 400 years of hell, fire, just to be burned up in the fire. There is a different future for you and me, our descendants. It's not, it's not for us to be destroyed. Our future is just beginning. Theirs is ending. And the reason why theirs is ending, because they are unrighteous, because they're evil and wicked, nasty, filthy, vile, disgusting people. But maybe that's the reason why some of y'all want to stay. Because you're just as nasty and vile and disgusting as they are. So for those of you who have begun, gone beyond unrighteous, filthy, vile, nasty, pugnant behavior, then we need to get together so that we can get on the on these 